Hi, and welcome to San Francisco. I'm Captain David with Spinnaker Sailing here at Pier 40. Today, we're gonna to talk about tides and currents. New sailors often tend to forget this, but tides and currents need to be considered before, during, and after your day of sailing. Many areas around the United States and around the world have very different tidal changes. These areas can also be affected differently by the currents. So you need to build your local knowledge about where you're sailing. As an example, let's take a look at where we sail, the San Francisco Bay. The San Francisco Bay is an inland body of water. Lakes, rivers, estuaries, and bays make up inland bodies of water. The San Francisco Bay is not part of the Pacific Ocean. As an inland body of water, we are subject to the effects of tides and currents. So what is the difference between a tide and a current? Tides are the raising or lowering of the amount of water in the bay. Here in San Francisco, the majority of the water comes in and leaves through the Golden Gate Bridge. These changes in the amount of water in the bay directly correlates to the amount of clearance you have between the bottom of your keel and the bottom of the seabed of the bay. Here I've drawn a line extending from the bottom of the keel of the sailboat. If the water level rises, there will be even more room between the keel in the seabed. But if the water level drops below our line and say the boat was over here, well this guy would have a chance of resting on the seabed. As the water comes in from the Pacific Ocean, it increases the amount of water in the bay. This incoming tide is called a flood tide and will continue to come in for about six hours. At the end of the six hours, we will be at high tide. When the flood is done, we have a short period of nothing. Water isn't coming in and water isn't going out. We call this period a slack tide. Because of the configuration of the bay, we have early changes in some areas and opposite or multiple flows in others, such as in these areas here. This area is past the San Mateo Bridge near the airport. As the flood comes in, which are the blue arrows, eventually this narrow area can't handle all of the water. So it starts to flow back, which is the red arrows, creating an ebb tide along the shoreline. You can also see that here in the estuary in Jack London Square. Flood arrow, ebb arrow. An ebb tide, you say? An ebb tide is an outgoing tide. Instead of the bay filling, an ebb is emptying the bay. Just like a flood tide, an ebb tide will last about six hours. At the end of the six hours, we will be at low tide. When the ebb is over, we will have a new period of slack tide before the new flood begins. There are several factors that affect tides, such as the moon. We have seasons with large floods and ebbs, and we have seasons with less drastic changes. I've put some links in the description down below so you can research more information on tides. So tides reflect the rising or lowering of the water in the bay. Currents reflect the speed at which the water is moving during a flood or ebb tide. Understanding currents is very important. Currents in the bay can range anywhere from one knot to five or six knots of speed. If you want to convert knots to miles per hour, take the knots and multiply by 1.15. Kilometers would be knots times 1.85. This is the north entrance to our marina at Pier 40. The Bay Bridge is off to the left. The ebb tide, or outgoing tide, is headed to the Pacific Ocean. The movement on the water is not wind. Rather, it is the current created by the ebb tide, and you can see it moving from right to left. This is an incoming tide, or flood tide, you can see the current moving from left to right. Here is a great example of how fast the current can be. So why is this important? Well, imagine you're out sailing and it's light winds. You know you're only gonna go at about three knots, but you're sailing into a two knot current. So three minus two equals one, so you're only gonna be sailing at about one knot. But during those same conditions, 
if you change the direction in which you're sailing, and now I'm sailing with the current, I'm sailing along at three knots, the current's moving at two knots, well, three plus two is five. I am now moving at five knots. Well, what if you're sailing out around Alcatraz? You've headed out in a moderate flood, but you've never checked the currents for the day. You've enjoyed your sail, but as you head back, you realize you are now headed into an ebb tide with a current of five knots. On top of that, the wind has died and your outboard will only push you along at four to five knots. Well, guess what? You're not gonna make it back. But the currents can be favorable as well if you plan correctly. If you wanted to go to Jack London Square, go on a flood, preferably in the middle of a flood, and then return on an ebb. This way, the current will assist you in both directions. I hope you found this video helpful. Understanding the body of water you are sailing in will help in preventing many mishaps. Remember to check the links in the description below for more information on tides and currents. In our next video, we're going to introduce some apps that can help you plan your day on the water. So until next time, cheers.